back to our channel. It's Vanessa and Sylvia. And we're here with another game uh, that we feel is a great one for the beginning of the year. Not only does it reinforce place value concepts, but it also is a great game for helping your students become so familiar with the hundreds chart, which we know, you know, is a great tool to have available for the learners in your classroom. That's right. So we're going to get to demonstrating and we hope you enjoy. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I would demonstrate to my students how to play the game Code Breaker. You're going to need a whiteboard, a hunter's chart, and a couple of uh, bingo chips or little Unifix cubes. The first thing you're going to want to do is choose your starting number and write it down. And important note, just have your students do this away from the partner they'll be playing with. Then they'll want to just temporarily put a second cube on where the number, their ending number is. And this will be that if the students solve the code correctly, they will end up on the same number. Now you're going to be getting them familiar with the hunter's chart by doing little arrows to show which way you're moving. If you move to the right one space, that's adding one. If you move down one space, it's adding 10. If you're moving to the left, you're taking away one and etc. So now I'm going to do, um, in our, when you're starting with students or for younger students, we'd recommend between three to five clues. So I'm going to start by moving two to the right. So I'd be adding two. So I'd be getting from 17 to 19. So I'm leaving little spaces underneath the arrows for the numbers to be printed. All right, and then I still need to get, um, you know what, down 20 more and then back one. So I'm gonna now go down 10. All right, and I'm gonna go back one and then down 10. So now I'm gonna double check my clues to make sure they're correct for my partner. So I'm gonna actually try moving it. So one, two, three, four, five, and yeah, yay, I end on my spot. Now I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase my ending number and I'm gonna switch my board with my partner and see if they can break my code. There you go. All right, so just as you are exchanging boards with your partner, I always recommend players to just, you know, on a quick sticky note or scrap of paper, write down what their code number is so that you can pass to the other player at the end to see if they actually broke your code. And then the players can start playing. So I'm noticing here that uh, Sylvia has me starting at 15 and I have to go down by 20, so that'll be 25, 35, so one, two. So I'm gonna write down my number. So the first time I went to 25, now I'm at 35, and I'm gonna go over by two, so one, two. So that would be 36, 37. So if I've solved her code correctly, I'm gonna see that her ending number was 37. And you can see Sylvia's busy working on mine over there. What you got over there, Sylvia? Well, I got, uh, I think I solved your, oh, and then you have a down. Okay, so I'm gonna go down by 10. Right, so do you think you've? I think your number is 38, and it made it much easier for me to move my marker as I solved, and then I was able to write down um, your, the numbers. And you know what, congratulations, oh. you broke my code it and was 38 and was yours 37 and mine was 37 what are the well, chances that out of 100 numbers on a hundred chart we were one apart that's right that's pretty cool all right so a couple of variations now that you've seen the game code breaker how you can differentiate for the students in your classroom one is you might find some of your students may not need to use the hundreds chart and they can just begin doing it mentally in their mind because they know that whenever you go down one space on the hundreds chart you're adding 10 if you go up you're subtracting 10 if you're going to the left you are or sorry if you're going to the right you are adding one and if you're going to the left you're subtracting one so here if the starting number is 15 i could think 25 35 36 37 and that would be the ultimate goal of what you want to get to with your students so that they just are so familiar with the hundreds chart and the patterns on it that they can do that mentally also, Sylvia and I demonstrated using the number, uh, a three to five kind of clues for our numbers. Um, you could easily give, tell your students that they can choose between six to 10 clues to give to get to the numbers as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the game and you have fun playing in your class. See you later.